I, I'll have to think about it. by some weird bacteria, so let everybody know, uh, hit them up. Okay, well. Our tour cycle was cut off in 2020. We had a European tour planned uh, to support a Dawn to Fair, and that got cut short because of reason we all know. Um, and then we released an EP and another album since then and now we're doing the leg of the Adon Fair tour that we didn't do. Well, in some sense, it feels uh, uh, quite weird to be back on tour. We haven't done any tours for the last two and a half years. And um, so in that sense, you know, just playing shows every night. We, we, I mean, we've done a couple of festival shows, but that was just like a warm up. Um, and in another weird sense, it, it feels just like nothing happened, like going to the bus, to shows. We've been doing that for so many years that I know it's a, a worn out analogy, but it's like getting back on the bike. In general, it just feels good to be back and see all these great places again. I try to not overthink the whole thing before I go on stage. I just try to be like positive and just go, go on stage and don't think too much. Just go out and see what happens and just have a good time. I guess that's my, like, my mindset for like a live show. Stress has never been a problem for me live. I think I, I get more stressed of doing like a short presentation in front of friends, but standing in front of an audience has always felt natural and like nice for me. I, I love it. It's something I love to do and it's never a thing that I feel pressed or stressed out to do. And it's for me, 
as a, as a fan from the beginning was a bit weird standing on the same stage as people that, that I've been looking up to for so many years. But today it just feels, feels great to have them as friends and also like band colleagues. I'm the uh, tour manager and uh, sound engineer for Cult of Luna. I've been working with them for uh, seven or eight years. Uh, as an audio engineer, I did monitor first, monitors, and now I'm doing front of house. Uh, I was supposed to do front of house a lot earlier, but then of course COVID hit, so no front of house for me. Uh, Cult of Luna is a super intriguing band when it comes to arrangements by themselves, but especially also the live arrangements because uh, there's a lot of stuff happening. There's two drums, there's a multitude of guitars and a shit ton of keyboards on top, uh, backed with some sparkles of uh, percussion and let's say live variations. So it's always about finding out what makes the moment of the song tick and of course also make the dynamics work. Uh, we have super heavy epic moments. We have uh, quite a few more fragile moments with uh, a lot of like ambient sounds so uh, the goal is to make all of this as cohesive as possible and um, of course give the concert goers the best possible experience
I'm Cult of Luna's manager since 2014 and I've been their lighting designer and operator since 2006. For this tour I started with what I've created for a Down to Fear which was a chaotic design with moving sails and, and smoke and I wanted everything to burn behind the band. From the beginning one of my main inspiration was Nine Inch Nails early years but for the last few tours I, I wanted to get closer uh, to contemporary art and dance like James Thierry or Dimitri Papayoanou. I see lighting just like painting. I have some textures and colors as bases and I play a lot with different kind of smoke and I basically push all dynamics and emotions that I feel with the music. And that's the beautiful thing with Cult of Luna. Um, when you listen to the songs, you instantly see images, colors, and you feel things. So I just try to translate that visual. So nothing is programmed or triggered. I play everything live, just like the band. And I believe that having no security net is also a big part of what's exciting during a show. Just like the band on stage, they play everything, so I must do the same. I've been working with Cult of Luna since 2016 and uh, my role is to uh, look after the instruments on stage and I mean the stage in general to make sure that the guys in the band are safe and having a great show. I started working with them because I I work for other bands doing backline, but I'm also in another band with uh, Christian, the keyboard player. Uh, so we played together in PG Lost. Um, we've uh, played with Cult of Luna uh, a few times. And yeah, I mean, they're an amazing band. And I consider them like my friends. I mean, being on tour with this band is, is amazing. Like, uh, like, they're the best musicians that I know but also like the best human beings to be around and, uh, and traveling with like we do. Well, this album was quite different to write because for the first time in 13, 14 years, I, I lived in Umeå, which meant that we could uh, meet together and practice in a different way than we did before. The difference is that we wrote it fast. 
and that we didn't know really what would come out of the whole process. We just felt like we had a good material, but you never know before you hear the final master if it would be good or not. But it also felt that we were ready to, to experiment more. And uh, it's always kind of exciting experience going into the studio uh, because at least I have no idea what's going to come out of it. It has been so much about trust because we couldn't be in the same room the whole time. We were sending files back and forth this whole recording process, but it felt so like safe to just send an idea to like Frederick or Johannes or the other way and just telling them, okay I have this part here I need a, a Johannes guitar here I need a Frederick guitar here or Johannes could send me an idea and tell me okay this is a synth part I need a really you know what to do and we didn't need needed to like explain to us we just told each other this is your part and we trusted each other that we would end up doing stuff that the other people liked and I think this album turned out great because we trusted each other so much and we respect each other as much as like songwriters and musicians. Into the night, um, I had this um, just a few words written down, and I had um, just a riff that was going around in my head, and um, I just um, recorded a short demo of, all, of it and um, presented to to the other guys, and said, "Is is this something you feel um, we can work on?" And uh, I guess it's it's a more more of a, a traditional song in 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 a, in a way, uh, more like a verse chorus a song but so it's I guess something a, a bit different to, to what we've done previously. The Beyond songs uh, so we had an idea and we started working on it and then we thought well maybe this could be like a really short song but but a song that reoccurs on the album with uh, different arrangements and, and different vocalists so so we we reached out to, to Mariam and she did her version of it, which is absolutely amazing. And um, then we sent it over to, to Colin Stetson and he, he did his own interpretation of, of, um, of the song, which is also amazing. So it was kind of a, a no-brainer to, to just go with it and, and, and put it on the album, basically. We had this idea to create Red Creek for quite a long time, but then the pandemic struck and it was the perfect moment to spend some time on it. Sounds like fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, from a label point of view, uh, we were very lucky to have Cataluna as our first release because they, well, slash we, uh, have uh, an audience already. So it wasn't that big of a chance. It was like a test balloon and it, that went really, really well. And we figured out how to work with the release, which is very hard. Um, and then we just moved on. And Johannes had this project with Gems Perturbator, um, initiated by the Roadburn Festival in Walter, uh, Final Light. So we already had our second release of the label. And the reason why we wanted to create this platform was not only to get uh, uh, a yeah, platform for us, but also for other artists that, that, that we uh, love and respect. And in 2020, we reached out to Birch and Roll. But yeah, it, it wasn't the time uh, uh, at that point. But two years la later, they, ha they had a new management and they reached out to us. And they had an album that, that was recorded but not mixed. And we listened to the songs, and I mean, the, the material was just mind blowing. The stars aligned. It was a perfect match, and, and, and now the album is finally out. So I'm mixing monitors for the band, and monitors consists of like each specific member of the band needs to hear what it needs to be able to work and play the music so they have each a personal mix uh, and they can request whatever they need from me and that's basically the role that the monitor engineer is to send them audio that they can work with. They know what they want and they've been on the road for so long that they know how it is but it's quite busy, some changes 
in between songs to make sure they can have the right cues that they need to be able to find where they are. And I think more of a challenge, more than a difficulty, that now they are transitioning to in-ears. In-ears are like personal headphones that they all have. So we can be more consistent in the work, but also they have to adapt and they have to they discover. Some of them are discovering this, so it was a bit of a challenge at first. And I'm thinking we are moving in the right direction with this. Everybody's happy. It feels consistent and nice every night. And yeah, I, mean, I think we did a good choice to just transition to in years for everybody.